In this video, we're going to look at the differences between the arrangement view and the session view. So currently we're looking at the session view. If we wanted to toggle to the other view, we can press tab. So that will navigate between them. Another way to do it is also these buttons at the side, okay? So with the session view, the way I like to think of it is like you're dealing with a bunch of loops that are going to keep playing over and over again, or just one shots where you can trigger them, it'll play once and then it'll stop playing. Okay, with the arrangement view, it's like reading a book. You start with the first bar here and you go all the way across until you get to the last bar. So you can see 69 bars are being currently displayed on here. So we can arrange things quite intuitively with like to make a song progression inside of this view and this is great for just jamming live but we can also make arrangements with the session view we can record what we're doing and pull it into Ableton uh, into the other view um, if we choose to um, now if you're DJing or doing some sort of live performance it's likely that you're doing it in this view um, so let's get into it what, we'll, what we're going to do first off is I'm going to show you how to put things onto the arrangement view and I'll show you how you'd structure some stuff in a, in a pretty basic way and then we're going to turn them into loops and we're going to take them over into the other view and then we're going to start manipulating them so in this video we're going to talk about um, quantization as well we're going to cover what that is uh, and I'll show you a little a few little ways of manipulating manipulating audio but the actual audio manipulation video will be coming up very shortly and then um, I think it might even be the next video. So if I come over to my browser here, I'm going to navigate and I'm going to get a few sounds that I like. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and grab these hook sounds. I'm going to pull them into the arrangement and I'm going to place it there. Okay, now I'm going to come over to the name and I'm going to click it and I'm going to go Control R and I'm going to call this hook. Okay, so Control R will rename and I've named that hook. So I'm going to keep it nice and organized. I'm going to grab this hat loop. I'm going to pull it in here as well. I'm going to come over here, click. Control R, hat, loop, sweet, I'm going to grab this MIDI and I'm going to grab this MIDI and I'm just going to, so I'm selecting them both by clicking the first one, holding control and clicking the second one, I'm just going to delete them, I don't want them for now, um, I'm going to right click here and I'm going to put a new audio track in, okay, so just made a new audio track, I'm going to grab um, the inhale, uh, no, well, let's have a look, what else have we got, um, we have do, 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 a kick drum. Let's grab the kick, pull that in, and the pad. That's what I wanted. We'll pull that in. Cool. So click here, control R, kick, click here, control R, pad. Okay, so we've got four elements that we're dealing with now. And if I put my cursor over this little gray part here, I can zoom in. So I'm going to talk about the ways that you navigate in another video, but for now, that is how we'd zoom in. So I can grab the clips and I can move them around by just clicking on them and moving them like so. Cool. So what we're going to do is we're just going to quickly make a very basic kick pattern. I'm just going to grab a snare as well. So, uh, Let's grab that rim. We'll drop that down there rim cool and if I want to rearrange how they're they're sitting here I can grab the channel and just pull it down so I'm gonna put the kick at the top I'm gonna to put the rim next uh, and then I've got my pad that's playing um, that can be at the bottom cool so with my kick drum I can zoom in a bit further and I want a pattern that goes kick snare kick snare so it's gonna be very basic so I'm going to go ahead and select that entire first bar by just left clicking and dragging to the front. I'm going to hold down control. I'm going to press D. So command, sorry, control D or command D is going to duplicate. Okay. I'm going to grab, I'm going to click that guy and I'm going to duplicate him as well. Okay. So now I've got a loop like that and I'm thinking maybe I want it to be like kick, kick snare. So let's just quickly have a listen to that and see how it sounds. Cool, sweet. So let's grab that, copy it over with Command D. And then what I'll do is I'll grab from the first bar to the end of the second bar. And I'm going to duplicate that again, again, and again. Cool. So now I've got my basic 
kick pattern playing. So now I've just made an arrangement. So let's go ahead and select this and we're just going to loop that selection. Cool. So I selected that area and I've just gone right click loop. So if we select right at the beginning of the bar and press space bar, let's listen to what we've got. Now, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring the volume of the kick down, let's say negative three, the snare down negative three. So I'm just adjusting the volume uh, and that negative three. Cool. So let's have a listen. Cool. All right. So I've got four bars where it's just playing that basically. And then I'm going to introduce my hook sound. I'm going to go here, go negative three and my hat loop, negative three. Cool. So grab that guy, put him there. All right. Play. Cool. All right, so I've just made an arrangement, and that is how you use the arrangement view in a very basic way. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change out my kick pattern a little bit because I prefer like kick, kick, snare, maybe kick there. Yeah. Bad. Put another one there. So I'm just going control copy, control paste, and then. Um, on the last bar let's do a variation so I'm just shortening the length of that kick by basically just grabbing it at the end and pulling it short and then I'm gonna go control D to put another one okay so let's listen to that kick pattern now I just want to make it a bit more complex Cool, perfect. All right, so now I've got a nice kick pattern. I'm going to select from there to the beginning. So I've got four bars selected, and I can actually go Control J, and I've just joined them all together. Cool, so I'm going to go ahead and select the snares, Control J, just join them all together. Now I can click that, Control D, copy it across. Control D, copy it across. So now I'm dealing with nice loops, okay? So now we're going to grab that kick. We're going to hold it with our left mouse button. I'm going to press tab. And we're going to drop the kick right there. Cool. So you can see that it's been loaded in here. I'm going to grab that rim. I'm going to press tab. Drop it there. I'm going to grab that hook. Drop it there the hat and then finally the pad cool all right so I've showed you how to use the arrangement view uh, so let's go ahead and delete all of that and we'll come over here and now I'm gonna activate my other camera so turn that on and you'll be looking at my APC 40 and you'll notice that each one of these clips is lit up and they actually correspond with the color of each of these okay so if I went and pressed this cool so that just played our kick pattern but you'll notice that it stopped okay so at the excuse me at the moment, it's playing things as one shot. So if I press that, um, to, the way to change that is down here, we've got our controls. And I can actually select loop. Cool. So if I press that again. Cool. So I've got that looping around. So if I click on my rim shot, I can enable loop. If I click on my um, hook, that's already selected as a hoop, so that's cool. Over here, my hi-hat, yep, so these have already got loop engaged. Sweet, so I can keep that kick drum playing, and maybe my intro of my track could just simply be this kick drum playing over and over again. Okay, but now I'm ready to start introducing some new elements, so I'm about to jam. You ready? I'm going to wait until the end of this bar 
and I'm gonna you'll you notice that I triggered two pieces of information to play and now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna play the hook as well cool and I'm gonna let it play but then I'm gonna stop it so I've pressed stop and that has stopped playing and now I'm going to introduce my hats. Cool. So now I've just started jamming and I've made a little bit of a kind of structure of my track. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to stop it all. And now I'm going to turn off my OPC because that gives you a bit of an example of how you'd use an external instrument. I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to do it with my mouse. Okay. So now I'm going to trigger my kick by pressing this button here. If I want to stop it, I can press stop there. I'm going to start it again. And I'm going to press stop down here. Okay, so there's a bunch of ways. Start it again. This will stop everything. Okay, so if I've got multiple things playing, if I want to stop everything, I click there. If I just want to stop the individual channels, then I'll just go boom on the channel that I want to stop. Cool. So. I've got that audio playing. Um, what I want to quickly describe to you is what this quantization is. Okay, so you'll notice if I press play, it kind of hesitated a little bit before it started playing. And if I press stop, it doesn't stop until the end of the loop or one bar. Okay, so it, if I press play, it doesn't start playing straight away because it's waiting till the end of a bar. If I press stop, it won't stop until the end of the bar. That's what quantization is. I can set it to two bars, four bars, or eight bars. So if I press play, it's not going to start playing until the end of eight bars. And then if I stop it, it's not going to stop playing until the end of eight bars. So that's going to play for a fair while. Okay. So if I want, I can have that turned off altogether. So if I press stop or play, it's just going to do it exactly when I tell it to. But I'm going to have it on one bar because I can't press the buttons exactly in time. So I'm not going to trigger things perfectly in time. So I'm going to turn that kick on again. And what I'll demonstrate is actually how I can combine the session view with the arrangement view at the same time. So I'm going to go up the top and I'm going to press the record button. Okay. And that's going to start Ableton um, recording. And you can see as it's going, it's counting up for whereabouts it is on the timeline. But we're not looking at the timeline. We're looking at the session view at the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start triggering this kick. Cool. I'm going to bring my pad in once I get to the end. So I'm going to trigger that now. Pad play through. I'm going to introduce the rim. Brought it in a little bit early, but that's okay. Bring the hook. And I'm going to stop the hook. And I'm going to bring in the hats. play over again. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and stop all of that. Okay. So now I can go ahead and press tab and I'm going to press stop on my space bar and look at what I've recorded out. So I have that entire progression. So I can come over here. If I just go ahead and um, click this button, it's going to go back to arrangement. So what it's doing is it's kind of like disengage this for now because I've been jamming here and recording things out. So if I go ahead and click that, now I'm able to listen to what I'm doing here. Cool. So I can listen to my entire arrangement. And there was uh, at a certain point I said I introduced something a little bit too early. You can see like 
uh, if I look at this, I've got I've got uh, eight bars here, and I've got eight bars here. That snare comes in a little bit too early, so I could just grab that and I could pull it back. So I made a little mistake, and now I've corrected it in my arrangement. Maybe another thing that I wanted is I didn't want the second part of that hook, so I could pull that back, and it doesn't play. Cool. So I can make whatever adjustments I like to my arrangement once I've recorded it in. But uh, sometimes when you're doing everything in the arrangement flute view, it doesn't kind of flow like a musician would play an instrument. That's why we use the arrangement view to get that creative flow and then we get the clinical execution of adjusting things after the fact in the arrangement view. So I hope that was a great demonstration for you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to support my channel, consider subscribing on YouTube, following on Facebook. Alternatively, if you'd like to support me financially, jump over onto Patreon and become a patron, or donate via PayPal. And don't forget, starting a new endeavor such as learning Ableton and electronic music production can be extremely overwhelming. So take things day by day and believe in yourself. Thank you.